Now that we've established the importance of life cycles and how they sort of relate to the process of meiosis, we can begin speaking of that process starting now with this first flow chart, and we'll just entitle it meiosis. So the majority of this lecture is devoted to learning about this process, meiosis. And let's remember that this process is simply um, another way to say to make smaller. That's something we want to keep in mind as we continue our discussion. So to begin, we're going to look at, um, in a very short overview, the four stages. And by short overview, I just mean we're going to name these four stages of meiosis. The first stage is very similar to what we have in mitosis. It's interphase. And we'll explain each of these phases in more detail as we continue forward. The second phase of this uh, process is meiosis 1. Remember, there are two division events. Two times do, do we see division, and we're going to see that second time a little bit later. The third step is called interkinesis, a very short step that we'll also go over. And then finally, we conclude with meiosis 2 as the step four, four, fourth stage, let's say. So we have these four things that we're going to be going over. In this first introductory video, we're going to be devoting some time to interphase and one part of meiosis. The key, I believe, and the most important part of meiosis that we'll cover um, will be during this video, and that will be prophase one. But first, let's speak about interphase. So that's our first step of meiosis, and let's talk about it. So interphase, very similar to what we've seen in mitosis with uh, just uh, some small differences because we have to understand the overall goal is to make smaller in meiosis. But in mitosis, I can imagine the overall goal is not to make smaller, but to make equal. So how are we going to differentiate that in terms of interphase? Let's take a look. First, in terms of interphase, we need to understand that the chromosomes all need to duplicate. So we'll write that down. Chromo need to duplicate. Just like they did in the previous uh, interphase that we saw in mitosis. And in addition uh, to the duplication of chromosomes, we have to also duplicate those spindle formation, forming uh, areas. And those were called what? That centriole pair. Remember the centrosome? We doubled it up. We're going to do the same thing here. We're at the centriole pair. Remember that 90 degree angle of two cylinders? It sort of looks like this. We're going to double this up to make sure that the other side of the cell also has one of these so that some spindles can sort of go out towards the middle of the cell and attach onto those chromosomes that we're doubling as well. So the centriole pair um, will also double. So we'll say also does. Okay, so that's one thing uh, that's important in the interphase. In addition, um, in interphase, what we also notice is that each chromo, so we'll say each chromo, has two sister chromatids, two sister chromatids. And we remember what chromatids were, especially sister chromatids. These sister chromatids are exact copies of each other. Because remember, what are we doing? We're duplicating chromosomes. So once we've duplicated, we've created sister chromatids. We start off with one, let's say, chromosome like this. And we're going to duplicate it and create its sister like this. This is a sister chromatid. This is a sister chromatid. They are exactly the same. They are exact copies of each other. And they are actually going to be held together um, via cohesin proteins. So we'll write um, SC for sister chromatids. They're, they have to be sort of glued together. So they're held together via, and it's called cohesin. And that's just a type of protein. There, It's a class of proteins. So sister chromatids held together via cohesin. In addition to that, um, we can mention that in interphase, we, if we're looking at human interphase, what do we start off with? In humans, we start off with how many chromosomes? We start off with 46 chromosomes. That's just a standard. But what are we doing? We need to duplicate. So how many do you think we're going to end up with? We're actually going to end up with 92, but it's important to know the terminology here. We end up with 92 chromatids, not chromosomes. Make sure you understand the difference. We'll look at that difference in a little bit more detail as we continue with meiosis. But overall, in interphase, our job is to double up everything. And the result of doubling up everything is creating these sister chromatids, which are exact copies of each other, held together via cohesin. So what we actually have, this is sort of a misrepresentation of it. I think a better way to represent it is you have a chromosome like this and a chromosome like this. They're held together in this area right here by cohesin. This is a sister chromatid pair, and this is its exact copy right next to it. This is another sister chromatid. So this is, I think, a better way to look at it. Each of these represents one SC. This is another SC. So that's interphase. Moving forward, we can now begin talking about meiosis one. 
and we'll label that right over here. And this video, um, we're going to just talk about prophase one because this is literally the most important part of meiosis. This is where a lot of important events occur, and this is something you absolutely, absolutely have to know about. Prophase one is the event, sort of, uh, sort of the defining moment of meiosis, in which meiosis, the things that meiosis is all about, happen mainly in prophase. So what do I mean by this? First of all, prophase one. Just some side notes we want to talk about. Um, this is the phase in which you will say chromatin condenses. Why are we condensing chromatin? The chromatin is condensing because we have to turn it into chromosomes. We have to turn it into those very nicely visible chromosomes. So they're going to condense even more so during prophase. And in addition, we're also going to put a side note of spindle formation. We're going to form those spindles that are going to connect those microtubules are going to form, these are microtubules that are drew here, and they're going to connect to where? The kinetochore, right? That's exactly what we mentioned in mitosis. The same thing is happening here. So in prophase, these are two side notes, spindle formation and chromatin condenses. Know that those two things happen. Also know another side note before we get into the nitty gritty of prophase, um, the nuclear envelope remember that's that enclosing structure for the nucleus and the nucleolus both uh, break down. So we'll write that down. Nucleolus breakdown. Why do they break down? Because now we have to open up this cell. We have to open up the genetic information to double and then separate. So we're going to double it and then separate it via the process of meiosis. Prophase 1 is the first step of meiosis 1. Remember, we've done interphase. Now we're on meiosis. Meiosis 1 actually contains um, four steps. It contains PMAT. Prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, and telophase 1, which we'll go over as we continue with this lecture series. So what's the important part about prophase? What are the th key components about prophase you absolutely need to know? Number one is the idea of synapsis. This is a term you must know, synapsis. Synapsis is the idea of having homologous chromosomes align and pair up with each other. Now, this is where students often get confused when we start looking at terminology like homologous chromosomes, sister chromatids, chromosomes. What is what? Well, what we're looking at when we're saying that synapsis is occurring is that we're looking specifically at the maternal and paternal homologs. So we'll write maternal plus paternal. So mom and dad, both of their information, maternal plus paternal homologs, will line up and pair up with each other. I'll draw this in just a second. In addition, what we also notice here is that the genes um, precisely line up with each other as well. So we'll say genes precisely line up. And that what I mean by that is if we have a chromosome, a hom homologous chromosome pair from mom and from dad, both of them equally line up right next to each other so that the same exact gene is at the same exact locus, sort of very easily lined up so that we're precisely right next to each other. The hair color gene is right next to the hair color gene from mom and dad. Um, and also we form, this is a term you should know, something known as the synaptonemal complex. That's one word, synapto nemal complex forms. So we'll write that down. This complex forms, this is going to be the complex that actually holds the homologous chromosome pair together. Overall, the end result of synapsis is the creation of a term that you should definitely, definitely know, and we'll write that down as sort of an overall goal of this. This creates, all of this stuff creates what is known as a tetrad. And I'll draw that tetrad for you. So tetra means four. So this is, makes complete sense because if we have this homolog, if I imagine this is from mom, this homolog, and I create another one that's absolutely identical to it but just different in terms of the fact that it's from dad, we also have two sister chromatids. They're going to combine together to form a tetra. Tetra meaning four, a tetrad. One chromosome, one sister chromatid, another sister chromatid, one over here, one over here. That adds up to how many sister chromatids? Four. That's that's where the name tetrad comes from. And what we can draw this as is uh, very roughly speaking, we can create a tetrad by saying that it looks sort of like this, where we have the combination of the chromosomes at these distinct regions right here. So you can see we have one, two, three, four lines drawn here. And these points at which they connect, where my pointer is exactly at, these would be known as the area that's holding the homologous chromosome pair together. The synaptone meal com complex will create this tetrad looking structure. The textbook has much, much better figures of this, and I highly suggest looking at it because the textbook actually provides colored versions of the mom and the dad homolo ho homologous pair and also shows you the points at which the tetrad um, actually connects.
So that's synapsis. Know that synapsis occurs in prophase, and know that prophase 1 is going to be the point at which you have this aligning and pairing up of chromosomes to give us a tetrad pair. In addition, another very, very important part of prophase 1 is crossing over. I think this is one of the most important parts because this is what's going to be very important in terms of genetic recombination, in terms of variation, and we'll see how. So what is crossing over? Crossing over is the idea in which what we have are enzymes um, break and region DNA molecules. So we'll write break plus region DNA molecules. If you look in your textbook or look at the videos that are provided, on the playlist section of the site, you'll notice that crossing over is the event at which this area right here, let's imagine, so if I draw this out and I just sort of bold right here, this bolded area and the bolded area right next to it, these two are going to, let's imagine, break off from each other. They're going to break off from these enzymes because of these enzymes. And they're going to literally switch spots. They're going to switch spots and that's the idea of crossing over. That's what we mean by crossing over. But specifically, there are some caveats to it. And this representation that I did here is not um, a completely accurate for this reason. This has to occur between non-sister chromatids. So it occurs between non SC, do not forget that, non-sister chromatids. Um, it only occurs between the things that are not connected by um, Let's imagine this is a sister chromatid pair 1, SC1, SC1. This is SC2, and this is SC2. Dad, mom. What's going to happen is you always have the combination, the crossing over between SC1 and SC2. Never, ever, ever do you have SC1 combined with SC1 or cross over with each other. That would be redundant. It doesn't make sense to cross over genetic information from mom because remember, the sister chromatids are what? Exact copies of each other. If you're crossing over with sister chromatid pairs, you're crossing over the exact same genetic information. But if you change it up by using the homologue from dad, then you cross over, you're definitely going to be crossing over and resulting in new new gene combinations. We're going to write that down as this overall event of crossing over results in new, absolutely new gene combos. This is why you're so different from your mom and dad. This is why you're not exactly the same as them. This is why we have sexual reproduction leading to variation because we get new gene combinations entirely. And this process is something known as genetic recombination. Absolutely know this term. Genetic recombination recombining the genes so that they form a new combination altogether is what crossing over is all about. Utilizing these enzymes, utilizing this tetrad pair. The whole purpose of making this tetrad is so that it's easier for these enzymes to sort of sw swish and swap the uh, associated genes that are necessary for crossing over. This is going to happen at a huge scale. You have to imagine this is happening over 23 chromosome pairs. Every single chromosome pair is going to be doing this, creating tons and tons of different combinations combinations. This is the beauty of meiosis, and this is sort of where genetic recombination and variation play a big, big role in crossing over. It's very important to understand that. And the last thing I want to talk about is um, this term known as the chiasma. Not chiasma, but chiasma. The chiasma is the location where the homologous chromosomes are still attached. So we'll write location where HC, homologous chromosomes, still attached. So we're running out of space. I'm just squeezing everything I can. Um, this is where we have, uh, actually, this is going to be the place, the chiasma. is. So remember this bolded region that we did here? This would now be considered the chiasma because this is actually um, also the place where two non, what, non-sister chromatids, of course, crossed over. That area at which you had this amazing event of crossing over, this amazing event that's going to lead to new gene combinations on a huge scale is referred to as the chiasma. You had a chiasmatic crossing over event that occurred because of the synapsis that formed a tetrad in prophase 1 of meiosis 1. One sentence, one run-on sentence to completely summarize meiosis 1 prophase 1. This shows you the importance of this step.